Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over the composite trapezoidal rule. Now the idea behind the trapezoidal rule for an integration method is to estimate the function as a first order polynomial and then estimate the integral as the area underneath that first order polynomial. And so for the composite trapezoidal rule, essentially what we're going to do is sum together several applications of the single trapezoidal rule function. So let's go ahead and get started with this example that I have. This is my given equation and my bounds, and I need to have three segments um, over which I'm going to integrate. So the first thing I need to do is graph the function and create a line graph. And so right here, I've already graphed the function for you in MATLAB. And then down here, I just made a basic sketch of a line graph. And this is like a tool that my professor taught me um, for doing these integrations. And I think it's really super helpful so that you can see what's going on better. So the second thing we need to do is define A, B, N, and H. So A is our lower bound. And that was given to us as 0. And B is our upper bound, and that was given to us as 1.4. N is the number of segments, so in this case we need to have 3. And h is our step size. And we can calculate that using this equation right here. And basically, this is how big each segment is. So basically, it's the upper bound minus the lower bound divided by how many segments we have. So in this case, h is 1.4 minus 0 divided by 3. And that gives us 0 0.4667. So now for step three, we need to plot and identify the key points. So I'm going to start by plotting A and B on both of our graphs. And then this is A, which is at zero, and B, which is at 1.4. And so we know that we need to have three segments within our integration bounds. And so we need to figure out at what location these bounds of our segments are. And so this is where we're going to use the step size. Because since, e since each segment has a distance of h, we can say that this bound will be a plus h. And then if we now add another h to that, we will be at a plus 2h. So a plus h is 0 plus 0 0.4667, which just gives us 0 0.4667. And a plus 2h is 0 plus 2 times 0 0.4667. And that gives us 0 0.9333. And so then on our actual graph, out right there and about right here. And so for the trapezoidal rule, we're estimating the function as a first order polynomial. And so basically what we're going to end up with is the summation of a bunch of trapezoids. 
And so I'm going to go ahead and draw that on our graph just so that you can see visually what this rule is based on. So I'm going to draw a vertical line from the x-axis to our function. And then I'm going to connect each of these segments as best I can with a ruler on a writing tablet. Okay. That's our first segment. Here's our second segment. And here's our third segment. So each of these trapezoidal areas is what we are saying or estimating the area under the blue curve to be. So that was step three. And now for step four, we're going to apply the trapezoidal rule over each segment. And I'm actually going to do this step two different ways. First, I'm going to take and use the single trapezoidal function to calculate the area of each of these three trapezoids and then add them together. And I want to show you that you get the same answer that way as you would if you just used this composite trapezoidal function. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to the next page. And I'm going to get started by using several applications of the single trapezoidal function. So for our first segment, our lower bound is A, which is zero. And our upper bound for this segment is A plus H which is 0 0.4667. And you can see that really easily back here on our line graph. So this is our first segment. And this is the lower bound. And this is the upper bound. So then I'm going to take and substitute these values into the single trapezoidal function. So I'm going to call this IS1 is A plus H minus A times the quantity of the function value at A plus the function value at A plus H divided by 2. And that is 0 0.4667 minus 0 times the function evaluated at 0 plus the function evaluated at 0 0.4667 all divided by 2. And that gives me 0 0.97885. So now I'm going to move on to my second segment. My lower bound is a plus h and my upper bound is a plus 2h and you can see that back here on the line graph this is my second segment and this is his lower bound and his upper bound And so substituting these values into the same general equation, we get a plus 2h minus a plus h 
times function evaluated at a plus h plus the function evaluated at a plus 2h all divided by 2. And that gives me 0 0.9333 minus 0 0.4667 times the quantity with the function evaluated at 0 0.4667 plus the function evaluated at 0 0.9333 all divided by 2. And that calculation gives me 3.53319. And then I just have one more segment. So my lower bound for this segment is a plus 2h. And my upper bound is b. And you can see that back here. This is my third segment. This is the lower bound and the upper bound. So I'm going to substitute these values into the general equation. And I'm going to get b minus a plus 2h times the function evaluated at a plus 2h plus the function evaluated at b all divided by 2. And that is going to be 1.4 minus 0 0.9333 times the function evaluated at 0 0.9333 plus the function evaluated at 1.4. And that answer is 4.92576. Now my final answer is going to be the summation of all of these estimates. So IS1 plus IS2 plus IS3 gives me a final answer of 9.43780. So this would be the answer to our problem. But again, I'm going to perform um, step four using the composite trapezoidal function, right? Where's my mouse? Okay, right here, just to show you that you can get the answer, or you can get the same answer either way. So here is my. Um, composite trap function. And so basically we have the step size divided by 2 times the quantity of the function value at the beginning of our bound, at the beginning bound, plus the summation, plus 2 times the summation of the function values at each internal step, plus the function value at our final bound. And so basically, we just need to list out all of our pieces to this equation, substitute them in, and we'll get our final answer. So we have h divided by 2 times the function evaluated at a plus 2 times our internal steps. So this would be the function evaluated at a plus h plus the function evaluated at a plus 2h plus the function evaluated at b, which is our n bound. So that 
going to be 0 0.4667 divided by 2 times the function evaluated at 0 plus 2 times the function evaluated at 0 0.4667 plus the function evaluated at 0 0.9333. plus the function evaluated at 1.4. And all of those calculations give me a final answer of 9.43780, which is exactly the same thing as we got using the other method. And it should make sense because this term right here, two times the internal or the function value at each internal step is basically what we're doing back here because this guy is an internal step and this is an internal step and so we've used him twice and then this is an internal step and we use him twice in our calculations so that's where the um, composite trapezoidal function comes from and so that's it. Um, I hope this video helped you guys better understand the composite trapezoidal function.